Okay. So I know a lot of people have never heard of this game. And I'm going to hopefully be able to... Um, what's the word? I'm hoping I can... Come here. I read you loud and very loud. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. Trying to break into police headquarters does that. Get over it, Bentley. You're safe in the van. I'm the thief here. I've got to steal that file from Inspector Carmelita Fox. Well, count on me to be your eyes and ears, buddy. Got their security system totally scoped. To get inside, you're gonna have to go through that air vent. All right, I'm going in. And don't forget you got me at the wheel slide. All you gotta do is grab the file and get back to the van. We'll do the rest. Just keep that engine running, Murray. I'll be down in no time. Cool. Alright, so that's the setup. Um, he's also gonna give us a little cutscene here, so I'm gonna get that out of the way. Hey, Bentley, I think I'm seeing things. Must be vertigo or something. Can you see those crazy blue lights? Really? I've read about this. Master raccoon thieves are able to sense thieving opportunities, which manifest themselves as unexplainable blue auras. Uh, according to my research, all you have to do is get near them and hold down the circle button, and you should perform a super sneaky master thief move. Hold down the circle button near blue auras. I'm on it. All right, so basically that's the main mechanic with this game. Um, the circle button allows you to do all kinds of super stinky thief moves. Um, the big thing though, and you might be wondering what kind of game this is, and I guess the closest thing I can compare the first game because the sequels are a little bit different, um, is with um, Crash Bandicoot, weirdly enough, and you'll see more of that when we get into the first real level, but this is just kind of a tutorial area. Um, you know, you can double jump, you can slash with your cane, you have context-sensitive movements like uh, the sneak. It's pretty simple, and you know, I think I liked it for that reason when I was a kid. security mainframe and discovered this vault's combo. Try dialing in 937. I have an ADM. I don't know, it says here that there's two, but I don't know, random people jump in to say something and then leave. But whatever. We're, we are going to go through with this. I don't care if I have to have a bunch of ineffective streams. Nice job! You got it! <laughs> I am going to make people fans of this series. I, I guess I would be curious to hear uh, Vanadium or anybody else listening in in the chat, which, hi everybody, um, whether or not you want me talking during these cutscenes, because there are subtitles, and I have nothing hiding on the screen because I want this footage ca uh, reviewable. Carmelita, I haven't seen you since I gave you the So, you know, let me know about that. Which reminds me, you need to return the Firestone of India to its rightful owner. Uh, and I was gonna give it to you as a little token of my. Hey, you know that bazooka really brings out the color of your eyes. It's very fetching. You think? This pistol packs a paralyzing punch. You ought to try it. Might snap you out of your crime spree. And give up our little rendezvous. Plenty of time for that once you're safely behind bars. Love to stick around and chat, but I just dropped by to pick up this case file. I think you've had it long enough. All right. So we get introduced to another character who unfortunately doesn't get to appear a whole lot in this game. Um, she was directly inspired by uh, Inspector Zenigata of Loop on the Fame. And if you play this game and you watch the story and you know what Loop on is, you're going to see a lot of comparisons there. That's why I know my buddy Fake Blue, aka Steel, aka Mint. He's got way too many damn names. He's going to love this series. Okay, well, you know, I'm going to try to spread this game as much as I can. Finally, the secret police file I've been searching for all these years. With this, I could avenge my family and regain possession of our most valued treasure. It all began when I was just a kid, bouncing on my father's knee. You see, 
I come from a long line of master thieves who kept all their secrets of sneaking and stealing in an ancient book. The Thievius Raccoonus. Anyone who read it learned to be especially sneaky, which is why we specialize in stealing from criminals. After all, there's no honor, no challenge, no fun stealing from ordinary people. You rip off a master criminal, and you know you're a master thief. Well, on the night I was supposed to inherit the book, five visitors came unannounced to our door. My father fought to protect us, but the gang of villains known as the Fiendish Five overpowered him and ransacked our house until they found the Thievius Raccoonus. Our family's manual of thieving greatness fell into their filthy hands. They tore the book into five pieces and split it up, each villain disappearing to the farthest corners of the world to commit dastardly crimes. Broken alone, I was dumped at the town orphanage. There I met two guys who became my lifelong buddies and trusted crew. Bentley, techno genius and strategist supreme, and Murray, part-time driver and full-time burden. Together we pledged to track down the fiendish five, avenge my father, and steal back the thievious raccoonus. I knew I was about to face the toughest test of my life. On this mission, I would either become a master thief like my ancestors before me, or fail and allow my family name to bite the dust. And that's the setup. Um, so when I was a kid, there weren't a whole lot of games that got that dark. And you know, it isn't played super seriously. But right there, we have a setup where, you know, Sly was destined to become a master thief. But his family was murdered horrifically, apparently, by five people who took his heirloom and sent him straight to the orphanage. How many kids PS2 games go that dark? And, you know, I really liked it for that. The, the game's storytelling really drew me in as a kid. All right, like I, that was such a cool setup for a game for me when I was, look, when I, when this came out, I was four. Okay. I was playing this when I was about four years old, maybe five. I don't know, but pretty young. That was a nice piece of work back there at police headquarters, Sly. Come see me if you want to check out any of your old movies. I've got them all here on my computer. Use the left analog stick to move around the hideout and the X button to select things. Alright. So, this is basically like a little tiny I hub world. A route to our first um, park. as we play more of the game, we're gonna get to go to different areas, but right now we can only really go here. You can also see Murray, he's usually doing something in front of the next hub world to kind of give you a little hint about what's coming up next. If you push the X button on him. Oh, you want one? Yeah, you know, he will offer you a little peanut. His animations change during each of the uh, different worlds that he's blocking us from. So, you know. But alright, I'll be quiet here. The road trip gave me the time I needed to study up on Sir Raleigh the Frog. As a young man, this hot-tempered frog grew bored of his life of luxury and privilege. On a whim, he tried his hand at a bit of piracy and found it to his liking. Raleigh, who quickly became addicted to crime, was brought into the Fiendish Five as chief machinist, where his evil tinkering genius rose to new heights. The last reported sighting of this mad machinist was off the soggy coast of the Isle of Wrath a small island uncomfortably situated in the middle of the perilous Welsh Triangle. The animations drew me in a lot when I was younger. Very much so. I loved them as a kid. So here, here we are in the first level of the game. And uh, you'll immediately notice very linear paths, and that's because this first game is very linear. Um, but you'll see what I mean in a little bit here. Hey, Sly! I just spotted something that's going to complicate the mission. See that nasty-looking gate? It blocks the only road leading into Raleigh's hideout. No problem. 
I'll just use my climb move. Okay, but remember, you can only climb on certain objects, like pipes and ropes. Yeah, sure, and like that ladder there? That is correct, but do not forget, Sly. You have to get close. Then hit the circle button to grab it. Yeah, 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 relax, Bentley. I live for this stuff. Yeah, and that's what worries me. There we go. Alright, so that's going to be the last cutscene for a little bit, so we can finally start exploring the level a little bit. Actually, I think there's another one, like, just a little bit across, but I promise the game calms itself with its cutscenes here in a bit. Yeah, so I really enjoyed the storytelling and the animations in this game. It felt like an actual like kid's cartoon when I was younger. So basically, you kind of have our setup. These clue bottles are basically our Crash Bandicoot crates. And you'll see what they do at the very end of this level. But for right now, I want to basically explore the level. Um, you know, get as many of these clues as I can. All of them, basically. And, you know, just do basic stuff. Like, um, they tell you to go up this uh, ladder here, which is pretty easy. You jump and hit the circle button. Like I said, the circle button is basically used for every, like, contextual move. But um, you also have that other path right up there that they don't even tell you about. And obviously there's also that boat over there that you uh, get some clues on. So, you know, there's a little bit of exploring here. But it's still very linear. You done whining? Let's go. I'm just trying to keep you alive, partner. Fortunately for you, I launched these signal repeaters throughout Raleigh's fortress. Get close to one, and I can checkpoint your progress. Nice. All right. So here, basically, this works in a setup. I'm gonna let myself get caught here to give you guys an example. But here, see, you you have one chance to not be touched by them before all the searchlights in the area go red. And then, if you get touched again, it's gonna get it's gonna kill you. It's gonna basically shoot a laser beam at you. The way to shut it off is basically to smash the nearest uh, alarm. That's pretty much it. We'll take care of this goon here. This Waller student in leather jacket. Before we uh, pick up these uh, clue bottles too. And by the way, lots of smashable objects in this game. I did that completely the way the game didn't want you to. Smash those to get the clues too. Here we go. Here's a checkpoint. What's interesting is that during the development of this game, the object that was the checkpoint changed a lot, including at the very last minute. Um, right before the end of the development period, uh, the, the uh, checkpoint was actually a treasure chest with a reporter hiding in it, waiting to take a picture of you. Here's going to be another cutscene. You know, that blimp looks more like a machine than a hideout. You're right, Sly. That is a storm machine. It's the reason why it never stops raining around here. That explains all the wrecked ships. But why would Raleigh want bad weather at his own hideout 24-7? Beats me. But rain or shine, I'm going to steal my family's book back. And if Raleigh gets in my way, it's on. All right. Also... You, there's no point to do this, but you can kill the butt the bees. No reason to do that, but you know, you can. Bam. Luckily, all the guards can be killed in one hit. Um, there's a much harder version of guard that's not in this level yet, and you'll see that in a little bit. But right now, you know, I'm doing pretty good. Get another cutscene, they'll explain the hook. Cool. So yeah, that's real simple. Just like that. I remember when I was a kid, I struggled with that. <laughs> I was so bad at platforming and I couldn't do it. I had to like, you know, inch myself. But you know, this is the game that basically taught me how to platform, really. I mean, I think I was playing this even before Sonic. I think. I don't know. 
definitely around the same time. So if, if Sonic was like my introduction to 2D platforms, Sly was my introduction to 3D platformers. All right, there we go. All right, so you see this gate, this uh, safe here? That's gonna be what the clues are for, but I can't access it yet. Yep, already on it. Also, these worlds were so cool to me as a kid. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. There we go. There's all of them. Ah, there we go. There we go. Inside is a page from Phoebus Raccoonus. Sly, you found a page from the Phoebus Raccoonus. This page teaches old Drake Cooper's fast attack dive move. Press the triangle button to use it. Alright, so for the most part, these abilities that you get from these uh, safes are usually an ability that you can use on the triangle button. Um, the first one is a dive, just like that. Um, the thing about it is, is that the ones that give you a slight power up to your abilities are usually much better than uh, those abilities. Like, I use the dive a little bit. The dive is probably one of the better ones, honestly. Not all of them are too great, and that's kind of a hindrance on the game, though. I will be honest. But there are a couple cool ones, just like there's a couple bad ones. But that's one of the better ones, in my opinion. Prowling the grounds. All right, so this is the hub world of this world. Um, you usually have this, well, you always actually have this one level that you access to start the world, and then you get to uh, the actual hideout of the boss. And in this case, it's this big area. That blimp looks like the most secured location on this boat. If Raleigh's really as smart as his police file suggests, then that's where I'll find him. Wonderful idea, but your plan is flawed. Why? Because it's impossible to get near him. To access Raleigh's blimp, you would have to sneak through that high voltage power tube. To do that without getting electrocuted, you'd have to destroy that power generator. And to do that, you'd need two more of Raleigh's treasure keys, which are heavily guarded. Interesting. So when are you going to get to the impossible part? Fine. But I warned you, I've marked the areas um. you need to hit with holographic markers. Follow them to your objectives. Thanks. Don't mention it. It's your funeral. What? Okay, hang on. I gotta, like, open up my phone because, like, my uh, Twitch dashboard just shut down and the stream seems to be still okay. So I'm gonna quickly make sure that everything's alright. Sorry, I'm just gonna make sure. Oh, we have three viewers. Welcome, guys. Um, if you want to say hi and make sure that the stream is still working for everybody, um, that would really help me out. Um, just in the chat real quick. Um, my, my OBS screen seems to be working, but my Chrome is telling me I have no internet. So, yeah, just let me know. Make sure that everything is working. Would really help me out. Here, you know I better say that in the chat. Okay, we'll just make sure that. All right. There is. Well, he's gonna explain it, but it's a check. It's a hit point, kind of like Aku Aku's masks. So really quickly, I'd like to show off a little glitch. Okay, thanks, Vanadium. Um, I really want to quickly show off a little glitch I know in this game. So. You know, I'm not going to really do anything with it because I'm going to still play the game normally, but I kind of want to show it off anyways. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Blab and Mouse. Alright. Also, you can hear the boss talking, but... 
He's just saying how confident his lackeys are, and we know that. Alright, so this is one of the searchlight guards. These guys are a little tougher than normal guards. They still only take one hit, but catching them almost always leads to getting hit. Oh, see, yeah, yeah no, I did it. Alright, so the checkpoint there, as you can see... I could technically right now go into the next area even though I haven't gotten the two treasure keys because I made the searchlight guard smash the object for me. It's really easy to do too. It's kind of funny that this is even possible. I don't even, I can't even think of another time in the game where an NPC can harm a breakable object. Like that. And no, I can completely access the second part of this hub world, but... I'm not going to do that, but, you know, you can if you want to. A little fun little trick you can do. I'm also going to practice that and see if I can get that right. Alright, so we're going to go into the machine first. Better close those furnace doors. Jump and press the square button. That'll slam them shut. Yep. So this is my favorite level in this first hub world as a kid. Well, second actually. First part of the hub world, this level is pretty iconic to me. So we're gonna quickly just make sure that we get all the uh, clues. Like you can see how this is very Crash Bandicoot esque. I would say that that was definitely an inspiration, and I think it does its own thing enough where you know the game isn't just being a ripoff. And you'll see that more as we continue on. Yeah. Also, I'm just going to make sure, yeah, there's a bottle here. I remembered that. I shouldn't have any problem getting the bottles in the early stages because I've played them so many times. I kind of worry about the later ones, specifically in the Gothic Horror level. But we'll see. Also, these guys just shoot fire. You know, simple as that. There we go. Get that extra life. Uh, lives are mostly meaningless. Because the worst thing that's going to happen to you if you get a game over is um, you'll have to start the level from the beginning, even though you'll have all your clues. So, really, um, losing all your lives isn't really a punishment. Uh, slide 2 and Slide 3... Um, just get rid of them entirely. So, and that's because they're completely different games, too. Not really. I mean, I'd feel like, you know, if you know Jack and Daxter, Jack 2 is a way bigger departure from Jack 1 than, say, Sly 2 is from Sly 3, 1. But they are pretty different, and I would really like to cover the entire, well, all four games that are out as of the time of me streaming this. Who knows? They might announce a Sly 5, like, randomly. Sony, please. No, you know what? Actually, get these games on PS5. <laughs> PS4 or PS5. I don't care. Just make them playable again. Um, yeah. I almost got hit there. Cool. And just like that. The, if you fall down there... It could be a little bit of trouble because I think there's a checkpoint. Uh, I guess not. But there isn't really a way to get back up there, and that kind of sucks. So, you know, that might be a little bit of a limitation of level where you can't go back and get those clues. It's a really simple platforming challenge, though, so you might mess it up once, but you'll just have to die and start it over again, which isn't too bad. And you keep all the clues that you collect, so you don't need to get them all in one run. Even though I usually like to do it that way. Alright, so let me just think of my path here. I am definitely going to have to... I'm going to get this one. Because, yeah, this one's going to be a bit of a pain to collect if I don't do it this way. It's just that I'm trying to plan it because I have to come back here anyways. As you can see right there, uh, the uh, safe is right there. So we have to kind of loop around here a bit. Is the uh, audio levels good, too? I should ask that.
All right, so the last clue, or the one I don't have yet, that I needed to, is right here. Then you might be thinking, oh, there's two more. Well, the two other ones are like right over here. So I usually try to get that high one up there before I come back down here because obvious reasons. And there we go. Now it's just a safe little trip back over to the safe. There we go. Simple as cake. Interesting. Old Salad Cooper's fast getaway raccoon roll. Stories claim. Yeah, so the roll. roll I don't know. I like to use the roll, but sometimes it doesn't feel like it works all the way like it's supposed to. So yeah, like he said, I can switch between the dive and the roll with uh, the R L2 and R2 buttons. And there's the raccoon roll. It gets upgraded later on to be a little bit more useful, but I don't know, it's pretty slow. I don't really know if it's really that much faster than like me just like walking around, but it definitely is, but it's not to a degree that you'd feel it. I don't know, I feel like they could have done a little bit better with it. Alright, so, you know, it's just a little bit of a gauntlet here to uh, shut down all these furnaces at a high speed. And there we go. I don't think I mentioned this, but these keys are basically like um, the crystals in Crash Bandicoot. We need seven of them to beat a hub world. So, got two of them now. Alright, I'm also going to plug my phone in. Sorry about that, guys. Alright. Now we're going to go into this level, which is you know, the third level of this area. And you can have up to two horseshoes. In the prototypes, you actually unlock the ability to get a blue and black one. Which I don't know if those were originally ideas for Thievius Raccoonus upgrades. Yeah. Oh, shit. Sorry, I zoned out there for a second. Alright, I forgot I was playing a game for uh, the stream there, and I was just playing this game for the millionth time. But yeah, you know, just like that. This level is small, but it can be a little tricky with the amount of clues it has, because they definitely like to hide them in very good ways. I'll do my best to uh, make sure I get them all, though. Alright. Yeah, see, there's two up here. I also want to try something here. Yeah. Oh, doesn't help that we're not being very talkative right now. Well, you know, it, it's definitely going to take a while, but I'm hell bent on making people fans of this game. I, I don't care what it takes, how many bad streams, how many bad videos are going to go up, but I'm going to, I'm going to change people's minds. I am going to push this series into out of obscurity i i'm determined i don't care what it takes all right so how are we doing we got nine left yeah okay i i think that's about right i really always like this little platforming challenge with the lily pads obviously sly is a platform hero so he can't swim because you know that was just a thing for some reason that video game heroes can't swim plus it was an easy hazard to have in levels i guess Oh, damn it. See, now this entire area is going to get a little harder. But because I have two checkpoints... Well, that's not entirely true. I don't want it to go that badly. Ah, okay. 
Whatever. See, you know, I got hit, but it's like, whatever. There we go. Okay. So now I actually have to go back because the, uh, the safe was over here. There we go. These are the blueprints of Raleigh's entire operation. I wonder... Yes, I can wire this info directly into your binocucom. It'll show you the position of nearby clues and breakable objects. Cool. So, yeah, um, this one, this is, pardon me, I'm sorry, um, this power-up is basically in all the hub worlds, like, you get one of these for each of the first four hub worlds, and this will show you where clues, breakable objects, and that kind of stuff are. Um, I don't think I used Binakicon before, but you always have access to it. Um, you know, you can just see your surroundings, it, it gets kind of cooler with, uh, different Thievius Raccoonus upgrades later on. Um, right now, it's really just so you can look at the scenery. Also, I just want to say, very Scooby-Doo-ish. I've always thought about that. Like, these signs are very Scooby-Doo. And I just wanted to share that with somebody. And that somebody was you guys. Okay. Now we just gotta run back and hit that treasure key real quick. Cool. Let me just uh, text something. Alright, let's get back to it. Sorry about that. Alright, so we should just finish up this hub world before we go over to this part of the hub world before we go on to the second part. Because we got two levels still here, and then there will be two in the last one. Kind of a weird breakup between the two. Not that it's a really big deal, because you have to beat all seven levels in order to get to the, uh, the boss. I really love the dynamic between Sly and Bentley. Murray becomes more of a character in the sequels. He's not too well developed here. But here, this level right here, the fire down below. One of the more interesting levels in this hub world, I think. Definitely not my favorite. My favorite's on the second half. The fire down below. So... I don't know why. I never knew this as a kid. You can actually crawl across these, or like, you know, do the shimmy across these. I didn't know about that until I was uh, testing the time trials out, you know, in my own spare time. So I thought that was super interesting. Definitely didn't know about that. All right. Wait, did I? I hope I did, but that's whatever if I didn't. As you saw, the safe is um, at the beginning of this level. So what I like to do is I usually just grab the treasure key and then come back into the level and quickly get the safe and then leave. That's how I've always done it. So 
So, you know, a little uh, in the, in behind the scenes trick. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, but coins um, are much more useful in slide two and three. But here, if you collect 100, you'll get a horseshoe. You can have up to a gold one. And then if you have a hundred, if you have a gold horseshoe and you get a hundred coins, then you get an extra life. Which again, not very useful because extra lives are mostly meaningless. Most of the levels I'll die on in this game are usually the mini games where it doesn't matter if you die or not, you're going to get sent right to the beginning of the mini game. So it's like, whatever, I'll mostly be okay. I mean, I might die here and there. In the regular sly levels towards the end of it but definitely not right now <laughs> i hope not so yeah i have to jump down there usually to uh hit that one clue i don't think you have to it's just how i've always done it it's not like it takes too long to get back here anyways i'm pretty sure you can make it back to that platform but i don't know i'm so trained in my like six-year-old muscle memory <laughs> my six-year-old self muscle memory that you know I haven't really attempted to diverge from that. There we go. See right now, if I got 100 coins, I'll get an extra life and not another horseshoe. It's kind of weird that they chose a horseshoe of all things, but I guess it does stick out. Oh, no. Yeah. I got stuck on the clip and then I got hit. Not too big of a deal. one really seems kind of low I'm just missing a lot of clues all right six that that seems more reasonable I see three already I don't think I missed that many well there's definitely four so yeah what you're doing here this could seem a little bit obtuse but all you do is run on this little wheel here until that smashes for you. Alright, so we're gonna make sure. If I'm missing just two, then I definitely know where the other one is. No, I'm missing. I'm not missing any. Okay. Whatever. And there we go. So we're going to go back into that level, and I'll show this off. You also have a little mini-map. Unfortunately, you can't use it to go into levels you haven't gone to yet. But I can use it to get into the fire down below without having to do all that platforming. Because, you know, heaven forbid I do a little bit of platforming in a platforming game. But, you know, it's way faster. You're going to really wish Bentley was wrong in one of these, but he never is. It's kind of funny, though. No code can stand before me kind of becomes his, like, famous quote. Because he says that at least once per game, I think. He definitely says it twice in this game. All right, so this one, um, so you guys have to understand, I believe in 1999, The Matrix came out. Um, so it was still fairly new in 2002. So, you know, they introduced that. It's definitely kind of cool to mess around with, but I don't use it a whole lot. But it's there, so, you know. All right, so let's go to the my least favorite level in this, in this uh, part of the hub world. In this hub world, actually, I should say. We're gonna just go over here. So we're gonna avoid the searchlight guard. Since I don't wanna, you know, test them. The searchlight guards usually will hit you if they catch you. There's usually no way around it. In fact, me managing to do the uh, weird speed run trick without being, you know, hit was a miracle. Like that doesn't usually happen. Usually I'll get hit no matter where I go. 
I'm gonna enjoy this. Don't you get it, Sly? If you step on that rug, forget about becoming a master thief. You'll be a master dartboard. Wait a second. What if I jumped into that barrel for protection? I don't know. It looks pretty risky and very unsanitary. Only one way to find out. All right, so here, the gimmick of the level is that I gotta use this barrel to protect myself from these uh, darts. So because of that, I have to drag it throughout the entire level. Um, so it's definitely not a bad mechanic, and it does get brought back in Sly 1 and definitely in Sly 2 for the worse. Yeah, it's pretty good here, but in Sly 2 it gets pretty bad and obnoxious. Um... You can see that there's another gimmick to it too, but that doesn't get used too often. It's definitely a little bit of a change of pace, and you know, even though that this is my least favorite part of this hub world, it's not a bad level overall. I just don't care for it too much. I'd rather just, you know, I'd just rather be sly. Like that's the thing. I'd rather just do some acrobatics, you know, smash some goon skulls in, which I just did, to be fair, and you know, just go on with my day. But unfortunately, you know, we, we have to do it a little bit differently here. That's okay. I'm not saying that diversity is bad. Alright. So I definitely need to go get my, uh... Where did I put it? It's all the way back here. Oh, I didn't... I, I missed that clue. Whoops. I'm sorry, I've been speedrunning this level lately to get the damn time trial. Where did I put my bar? Oh, it's right there. I'm stupid. Cool. So we'll smash these up. We're up to uh, 18. 19. So far, it's been a pretty stable stream. I'm kind of amazed. Have I finally figured out my proper stream settings? I think this is the most, the, the least amount of drop frames I've ever dropped, and that's amazing me. I, I, I'll try not to talk about the stream too much because, you know, I am uploading this to YouTube after. Because I am determined in this. Like, this is going to be my life's goal. To get people to care about Sly Cooper. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make 32-bit blues on it. I'm gonna... Basically, what you've seen me do for Sonic, I'm gonna do for Sly. I don't even care. And then after that, I'm gonna do Mega Man too, Because I love Mega Man. And you know what? I am super disappointed by how that video went. The Battle Network 3 stream VOD. But, you know, I, I will do it. I don't care. You know what? I could get that without using the barrel. Hang on. Whoa. Okay, my stream finally came back on my Twitch screen. Kind of just like flickered in my eyes. That's okay. By the way, I will say this, you know. Well, thank you, Vanadium. You know, like I don't expect everybody to be vocal in chat. You know, if you just want to hang out, that's all I ask. And you know what, Vanadium? You, you are one of my best supporters. I will say that. You are definitely one of the best um, I have. So, I do appreciate that. I really do think that a lot of people can get into this. I did not get the stupid... I gotta go get the safe. I'm also gonna smash that. I'm kind of surprised I didn't do that the first time. Here it is. Oh, yeah, we already got the upgrade to the dive move. The dive move you already know. Just jump and hit the triangle button near breakable objects for some fast breaking, fast collecting action. Alright, so this is the dive move, right? Um, you, you already saw me have it before. 
I can do it like that. But if I'm in midair, now I can do it like that. Um, it, I don't use that one nearly as much as just the standard dive. I don't even know why they would think that, you know, people would use that over. I mean, you know, like, I barely do that even, but you can. Alright, see, so you can cheese this one. You can cheese a lot of these locations to avoid using the barrel. But, whatever, we'll just do it the way the game wants us to. And that's finally the first half of the hub world done with all five treasure keys. So now we're going to go to the second half of this hub world and get the other two uh, sets. So we'll just jump straight down. Now let's smash this thing for real. Bam! Lots of coins come out. In <laughs> one of the prototypes, um, there's two leaked prototype demos of this game. Um, this thing only spits out one coin. It's kind of funny. There we go. Astonishing! All my calculations led me to believe you had failed to knock out that generator. Never was good at math. Well, here's a real test for you. I found a way out to Raleigh's hideout, but unfortunately, it is doomed to failure. You're not going to tell me I have to shoot myself out of that cannon. I'm afraid that's the only way. Now you're talking. You know what? There's going to be, um, Vanadium, uh, there's going to be a lot of time for that because I'm kind of putting Sonic 1 on hiatus for a bit. So what are we waiting Um, mostly because, um, yeah, yeah. Not because the script isn't done, it is, and I do plan on recording a bit for it here pretty soon. Um, the thing is, I current, I recently asked Naoto Oshima, uh, quote, for something, and I kind of want to get, I want to see if I can get his result in, for the video to help promote it, before I really start to crack down and try to get that video done for a certain time. So, you know, you got plenty of time, man. I... I want to do a couple more of these smaller 32-bit blues I've been doing to sort of, you know, inch my way into, like, learning how to edit better. But I will be recording for Sonic 1 pretty soon. I That that has been... It's been too long, I think. I, I think I really gotta, like, sit down and just start working on it because I think people are wanting it. At least I hope people are wanting it. Um... I definitely have a harder time getting connection to game fans than I do animation fans, as you can probably no doubt tell. And that's just because of the extra competition I have with game like gamers. I can't get that yet. I can. There is a way to do it. I mean, obviously I have to turn the searchlights red, but I want to do it without. You know, triggering anything because I am a thief. I'm a master thief. I should be able to do that without getting caught all the time. So there we go. By the way, um, favorite level in this hub world by far. This is such a cool theme for a level. Not very thiefy. I mean, wh what's so thiefy about a graveyard, a gunboat graveyard? It's rad as heck though, so I'm okay with it. By the way, this thing. I have no idea why it's here. Um, when I was a kid, um, my uncle had two games for the PS2. He had, big, well, he had other games, but the two games I played was Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and this. Um, so I remember thinking as a kid that this was somehow the Neversoft logo. <laughs> this weird alien creature thing. I have no idea why it's here. The developer commentary that you unlock if you do the Master Thief Sprint doesn't even talk about it, so I have no idea. I'd really like to know what the deal with that thing is. But anyways. Cool. I love doing that, by the way. But yeah, this is just a small little platforming level that, you know... I want to kill this guy. I don't care. It's fun. Check the chat in a second here. I just want to avoid falling into the water. There we go. That's the level, basically. Press the, circle to enter the, vault code. the chat also frees up again. Input oh, you're lucky. 
All right. Just making sure my Twitch screen on my computer is like freaking out. I don't know why. Uh, I would like to think it's not. People, people are gonna dip in and out. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is with this game. I mean, I, I could just stream Fortnite and get a million views, but like, I don't want to do that. I want to get the things I like out there and explore them a bit more. And you know, because if I did, if I just did what would be popular, I would just do all my all the Tom and Jerry videos. Like, I, I have the viewers. I know I do. It's just that they're for the animation stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, it just makes my day a whole lot more when, you know, somebody, like, clicks. Like, yesterday, I actually got a comment. And presumably a subscriber. My number went up, so I assume he was he's a new subscriber. On my Sonic 1 prototype stream reaction. And that was super exciting for me, you know? I mean, I wish it was my Sonic CD video. That's kind of the thing I'm most proud of. But, you know, it was something that was, I did that wasn't related to animation that people were just Googling because, you know, I don't know. It, it means a lot to me when anybody subscribes, but when I get a subscriber for the niche -er things that I do, it just feels more rewarding. I don't know. So yeah, this is one of the mini-game levels, um, kind of like Crash Bandicoot, there's a couple levels in this game that kind of change up the formula. So here, it's just a basic Quinn stick shooter. Um, I used to have a lot of trouble with this as a kid, but if I die more than once on this, um, I'll be very surprised. But yeah, I definitely try to like pay more attention here. Um, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but I'm not too great with shooters. Never have been. Well, at least like you know the kind of shooter this would be based off. Like I don't know, uh, Smash TV or oh no 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 no, God. <sighs> See, it gets nuts really fast, and you know I bet a lot of kids got stuck here. Luckily, when they're really close to the treasure, uh, the gates there, um, the cr shooting the crab once will, like, smash it and the treasure chest. So at least they gave you a little bit of mercy for that. Mercy. Did I just say nursy? Luckily, I only got ten left, but it's starting to get ridiculous how many crabs are coming out of these gates. Like, look at all this. It's so easy to just miss one. Come on. Okay, last one. There. Congratulations, you did it. Oh, what did you learn from my Sonic CD video, Vanadium? I'd be curious to hear that. Alright, there we go. That's all seven, right? Yep. Alright, so that's the first hub world. Um, so I'd like to try something really quick. I don't think the game's gonna let me though. Well, actually it shouldn't matter. Here, I'll unlock it. There is a trick to get in here without any of the treasure keys. So hypothetically, you can beat this level without um, without ever um, getting more than one treasure key. Let me just see if I can do it. Ah, oh, see, I messed it up. All right, so I gotta explain something. So this game's got a really good system of getting you back into bounds if you fall off a pit or land in water or something. It'll just bring you back to the last time you touch the ground. And as you can see, the dust cloud right there, right there, um, that means the game has processed that I've um, landed there. Thing is, though, as you can see, I can do these short hops without making a dust particle. And if I do that, some really cool things can happen. See, no, I landed right there. I won't try this for too long. I would like to get footage of it for the review, but, you know. The problem is the double jump. The double jump can definitely mess with you here. Did I do it right there? I don't know. See, I almost did it there. 
See, as you can see, I landed back here because this is the last time the game thinks I touched the ground. So therefore, I can actually send myself right into the cannon and, you know, um, go into the level without actually getting any of the treasure keys, except for the first one, obviously. I'll try that one more time. Because I have one more horseshoe, but... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm messing it, so... Oh, that's okay. I was just curious. I don't think I got a whole lot of feedback on my Sonic CD video, which kind of let me down. So, you know, I, I, I do wish I got more comments on it, but... It's one of those things that I feel like if another video does really well, and my, my Sonic CD video will get like a second chance at life. It's kind of one of those situations. Listen, Raleigh. Wipe up my family and steal what's mine. You better expect company. Oh, I'm ever so I'm sorry I couldn't get that glitch to work, but how sloppy of me not to finish. I think what I should have been doing is I think I should have been trying on the right side of the uh, water there. So without further ado, let me make amends by what? To so gargantuan size and squashing you like the insignificant bug that you are. I love that. So, I don't know, this is somebody's fetish. So, yeah, I don't know if this is what you were expecting from a fight with Raleigh, but he bloats to the size, and you kind of just got to avoid him until he shrinks back and you can whack him with the cane. Um, the trick is the platforms are going to make this a little bit more tricky. Um, so I usually do it like this the first two phases because you know, you can jump to the other platforms obviously But I find that very fast to do It's just about pattern recognition. So now what's gonna happen is the platforms are gonna start going down um, The easiest way to tell when you're supposed to stop running away and you know stop and hit them is through when he, uh, the lights don't show up like that. So now we're already on the last phase of this fight. This fight's not hard. I used to think it was as a kid for this one part alone. You just gotta play a little bit of, uh, you know, jump, jump rope. And then give him the final whack and that's it. Oh, yes. You know, I only learned that, like, right before I was finishing the video. Mesa City is so well guarded, a snake couldn't slither in without, without setting off alarms. As all of the cutscene play, the previous raccoonists held detailed instructions on how to perform my ancestor Ryoichi Cooper's ninja spire jump, a technique he developed while sneaking into the thickly fortified castles of Feudal Japan. Finding a way off Raleigh's boat got a little tricky with the untimely arrival of Inspector Fox who, failing to find me, busted Raleigh and his crew. With the storm machine out of commission, boats found their way back onto the ocean, and the mystery of the Welsh Triangle faded from memory. My gang and I loafed around England for a while, enjoying the pleasant weather, and then headed back home, excited for our next heist. I took the liberty of pinning your mission map up on the wall.